finally got the super capacitor bank, array, whatever you like to call it, I got it all done. I had to do a little bit of a different thing going on here because Amperix was falling a little bit behind. They were expecting to get more of the 400 farad 3 volt super caps in stock by now, but something happened with shipping or whatever. Um, they also just introduced a 600 farad 3 volt super capacitor. You can buy those in single quantities or you can also buy it in a five pack string. So I said, screw it, let me try two of the five string ones. So I got those on the bottom here, definitely a little bit bigger. And I like them. There's definitely some work they need to do to it a little bit. Let me bring you down to the bench. I'll show you how I put everything together and I'll go with the plus and minuses that I've kind of found out with messing with these strings for a few days. And then let's put the whole thing together. This way our next video, we can actually install it in the car and give it a shot. Okay, so here's my completed unit. I got my two original strings of the 400 farad Amperix 3 volt super caps. And I also added in two of these 600 farad ones. Now the plus side is, if you can see right inside here, let me zoom in just a little bit. You can see that they have pre-bus barred them together. It's really thick, it's a really strong, and these are rated for 350 amps up to one second, which would definitely go along with how beefy these uh, bus bars are. Now they each terminate, let's see if I can get this here a little bit. There's actually like a little copper section over here, so this way you can solder or braze or whichever way you want to do with it, but the rest of it is a silver. Now, the thing is, I put two of these in parallel, so that gives me 1,200, wait a second, 240 farads, because these are 120 farads each. And they actually originally, let me zoom back out, came in these packs. They were originally wrapped in this hard plastic, which would actually show Amperex Beyond Batteries, um, AMD 13, I don't know why they put 13 volt, because on the Amazon... So they say they're 14 volt. Believe it or not, it's actually a 15 volt maximum. For three volts a cell or five cells, it's 15 volts. So they're going on the conservative side, and I'll tell you why in a second here. 120 farads, 350 amps. That's what each one of these five strings are rated for. Now, my guess is the reason why they're going on the conservative side, side and saying either 13 volts or 14 volts maximum for this pack is there is no balancing involved. And I was originally going to add in, I even had it ready, all soldered up. I was going to solder in each wire to each one of these bus bars so this way it would have balancing. Well, the problem is unfortunately, the bus bars are so thick, I can't get them hot enough without probably damaging the supercapacitors because too much of the heat from warming up the bus bar so this way the solder would actually adhere to them would transfer into the supercapacitor. I already had enough of a worry with that when I was actually heating up my copper bus bar and attaching it to here. At least this had a copper end on it so it did heat up fast enough and it's a smaller amount of surface area on these positive and negative terminals. So it wasn't too hard to heat them up and it probably didn't transfer that much heat into these end super caps. But if I was to go and actually heat up one of these main bus bars enough so that I can have solder stick to it, I'd probably end up damaging the super capacitors. And I don't have a spot welder, otherwise that would work beautifully. So let's take a look at the pack itself now. I have already put it through this load test like four or five times. And here it is. This is one of those 100 amp um, 12 volt battery load testers. And I ran it through about 10 cycles and then recharged it back up on my bench power supply just to make sure everything worked correctly. And I also wanted to see how far these would go out of balance. So this has been sitting at 13 volts on my power supply. Let me see if I get my knees together here. It's stuck. It's wrapped around. And Let's uh, check the voltage on the top one here, just so I can show. I'm actually kind of surprised they really haven't gone out of balance at all. So, let's uh, get it so it doesn't have any type of reflection. There we go. So, let's do here. Negative, positive. 
2.65, that's probably the highest one right there. And 2.62, there's, you're talking, what? Not even 10 millivolts or something like that? But the whole pack, right now, currently is 13.07 volts. Now, if, let's go ahead and throw it on a charger real quick and bring it up to 14.4, which is where a car would normally run. Okay, so now we're basically at 14.4 volts. So let's check the pack again, just to see how far out of balance it went, or lack thereof. So, first one, 2.88, 2.85, this was usually the high one, 2.91, Woohoo. 2.88 so as long as you don't actually run this at 15 volts there's really no chance of going over so far at least in my quick test of running through 10 cycles once we get it installed in the car and we let it run for a month we'll come on back we'll take a look at it see how far out of balance they've come from this video right now and see if it really does need a balancing or they actually size these perfectly and they all have basically the same amount of internal resistance and they will age all at the same amount of time that would be great then you don't need a balancing circuit technically as long as you keep it down below 15 volts so let's go to final assembly okay so here's the box as you saw at the end of the last video i got the lithium iron phosphate battery mounted i got the heat sink and the half ohm resistor for controlling the amount of amperage that goes in and out of the battery mount it onto the back side here and I got the relay controlling system set right here and also let's see if the camera can focus in here enough I also have my RJ45 connector so I can go out to my little display I made and we have positive and negative that will run over to the supercapacitor side to keep it topped off and also to keep the battery topped off as well so thinking we're going to put it in this way and mount negative and positive over here on this side now i was originally going to put negative and positive the high current lead that would lead out to the actual car itself over here but at the same time i went back on ebay and bought three custom sized cables one six inch and two nine inch cables two for positive and one for negative and i'll show you why i got two and positive in a second and the way it stretches out, I might actually be able to put everything on these one lugs, so I might just cut these off. I'm not quite sure yet. We're going to find out in a minute. But we're also going to have it going through this... Let's see here. Close it down here. Oh, God. Why am I having a brain fart? This 150-amp fuse from um, Busmaster or whatever it is. I can't remember. But it's 150 amps, 42 volts DC maximum, ignition protected, waterproof... 150 amp thermal circuit breaker so and it even has a button so I can do a main disconnect if I want to so that's gonna get mounted on the side here and also I got these off of eBay they're little street wires little adapters that will give you the standard battery connections those are going to go positive and negative so let's get started go it takes care of the positive side and that stretches right where it needs to go perfect now let's do the negative side there we go 
that's got a good connection. And that'll give us our negative. Now for the positive, we need to do a jump over from this side over to where this will actually go in and it'll be connected on the exterior part. This way, power comes in through positive, goes through the breaker, comes back out and actually gives us our positive feet to go to the car. Now one thing to remember also, since this is a name brand circuit breaker, 150 amps, I paid $35 or something like that for it. Sure, I could have gotten a 150 amp circuit breaker just like this from China for maybe seven or eight dollars. But then at the same time, we're kind of talking about safety at this point. A lot of things I'll get from China, when it comes to safety, I want name brand. So that's why I spent the extra money on the circuit breaker. Okay, so that gives me my high amperage and my low amperage leads on positive and negative. So, what I think I'm going to end up doing, since everything will mount onto these right here and here, I'm going to lop these off because I don't even need them. It's going to save a little bit of space, so let's bust out the Dremel. Okay, so now we got those lopped off and it gives me a little more space and a lot less overhang. So now let's connect up the positive and negatives up to these lugs right here. And in case anyone's wondering what those lugs actually are, they're nothing more than regular grounding lugs you find in Home Depot. Usually used for grounding things in the house. But they're pure copper, so I wanted the copper to copper connection. So this way we keep the resistance down as low as possible. So. Good solid connection. Okay, so now electrically it's connected. We just have to mount down the supercapacitor so they don't wiggle all over the place. So let's try to teach this wire where we want to go because these are four gauge wires. Nice. Now this is by no means waterproof at all. This is basically just so nothing falls into it and shorts out because we have the potential for 350, 700, well over a thousand amps just in that supercapacitor pack. Let's uh, hook up the screen to it, which is right here. Here it is up here, out of glare. Plug it in, da dink, and everything comes on. I wish it would default the voltage though instead of the other one. Now, see, right now the relay is off. Turn it back on. And you'll see power is actually going from the higher voltage in the capacitors and actually recharging the battery right now. So you can see it's already come up to 13.2 a little bit. And eventually it will equalize itself out. But let's do a load test just so you can see. There's positive. And there's negative. All right, can you guys see the meter correctly? There we go. Now you can see it. And it's telling me there's like 14.4 in there. This meter is actually kind of wonky, but it's close enough. And let me turn this screen on so that it actually stays on. There we go. So now we can see exactly what the screen's doing. So let's run a five second test. One, 1,001, one, 1,002, one, 1,003, 1,004, 1, 1,005. Wow, didn't even get below 12 volts. I love that. That's perfect. This is going to be fun to play with on the car. And as you can tell, right now, 
the battery is actually recharging the super capacitor, super capacitor bank. Wow, that was a mouthful. Now in real, once we get it in the car, by this point the car would have started and would have immediately started recharging the super capacitors, probably within 20 seconds, and then just topping off whatever we use really quick from the lithium iron phosphate battery. But in this test, there's no power coming back in, so the battery is compensating and recharging up the super capacitors as we speak. So here's the completed unit. Look for the next video when we actually install this into the car and get rid of the old lead acid battery and start putting this through some real paces. If you like this video, thumbs up please and share it wherever you can. Thank you very much.